I pulled back the uterus externus, and that is the flap everyone talks about. Um, the flap is... It's right in front of the spermathicae. Right there. This is the uterus externus. And this is part of what indicates that we have a female. And you fold that down. And there's your spermathicae. Right there, they're like two little tiny horns. And this is the only really sure way to be to know that um, you have a female. I'm using a 300 millimeter uh, Nikkor AF lens, which is not autofocus right now, with a Raynox. It's a Raynox super macro conversion lens. It's the DCR 250. And I have my uh, molt on a light box that I used to use for slides and I'm using a, a lamp really close to it. And so this is like an extreme macro. And so you can see those. Spermathica right there. And you see, this is a toothpick. <laughs> it's very small. I have not really been able to successfully sex very many of my my slings. There's a few, and they're on the bigger side, that I think, you know, they're suspect, male or female. But it was suspect male with my grandma stole pulchra right up until, I mean, gosh, it must be going on a couple years old now, uh, finally I was able to see the spermathicae and um, the little flap and that really told me that I had a female. And it's taken me a while to be able to understand about sexing tarantulas. I mean, I could look at the literature, I could look at the diagrams, and I could tell, like, okay, this is a male, this is a female. The trick was having patience and being able to just sit and, and play with um, the, the parts and see if there was a flap. And, and it took some time to figure out, you know, turning it over this way or that way, which way would be the best way to find out. And I think as far as females are concerned, you know, I'm not really satisfied confirming that I have a female until I see this spermathicae right here. So those two little little horns right there. One, two. Um, and the uterus externus. There's your little flap in front of it. So, and that drops down. A little spermathicae in there. So, I feel good about this molt. I mean, this is a confirmed female. Um, and this is Peekaboo, my Laziodora parahybona. It's actually Laziodora parahybona number two, um, the one that I got from. Uh, the gentleman that moved to Texas um, back in April, and um, yeah, this one was actually, this is a free tarantula. I got her when I bought the curly hair and also received the a hensi. so yeah, really nice. So I have a big female, I'm going to have a big female um, Laziodora parahybana. And let's take a look at Peekaboo's fangs. Aren't they gorgeous? So, give you an idea, here's the toothpick. So, her spermathicae were very small. And these are the fangs. 
Right now, um, after just molting the uh, leg span diagonally from the long, long leg in the front all the way to the back leg on the opposite side of the body, uh, we're looking at five inches for her. And, um, these are her, her fangs, and inside of these fangs, she has venom glands. And that's where they pump the venom. I know that some people think that a tarantula might suck its, uh, the prey, the juice from its prey from the ends of, of the fangs, but that's actually not the case. They have a mouth and their fangs really are for injecting venom. They are hollow and they do have an opening in the end, so they're like hypodermic needles and they're very sharp. Of course, her whole body is covered with hairs and these are how she gets around and senses what's in her environment because tarantulas don't have the best eyesight. The fangs, uh, they work independently. Sometimes they use them to um, help grasp as long as, along with their pedipalps, which is their first set of legs. But I've seen them do some pretty neat things with their fangs, like carry dirt from inside their, when they're building a burrow and, and dump it out. They'll use their fangs and their pedipalp legs, this first set of legs right here. And they can spread their fangs apart pretty wide. I mean, that's wide enough that I could stick my finger between them like this. So that's pretty amazing considering this is just a, still a pretty much a juvenile tarantula. Imagine when, when she's full grown, she could be, you know, 10 inches. Um, that's going to be a considerable uh, length for fangs and, and she'll be able to spread them apart uh, a lot. So you see how flexible they are. It's amazing. And in, in true spiders, the fangs are positioned differently. I'm not going to go into that here because I'm not an expert, but they're, they're even more flexible than this, really. They come from a different angle. And usually when they stab, when tarantulas stab their prey, you can see the motion that the fangs are creating. So if we turn it around this way, um, see what we can see here. Get another view of the fangs. Um, here's where the toothpick is between the fangs. They are able to open and we're looking at a little mouth parts in here, right here. Tarantulas, um, let's see if I can get a better view of that. Uh, let's see, move forward a little. Yeah, see there's a little opening mouth. There's a mouth in there somewhere. and into their mouth. When they're done, they have what's called a food bolus. They make a nice little round ball of mostly exoskeleton. And some of them, they have different habits. Some tarantulas like to deposit the bolus outside of their, their, um, their den and others will sometimes just keep it in there. And that's why you want to have some cleaner insects. Um, that'll go in and take care of some of that that you can't get to, particularly if you have a fossorial or burrowing tarantula that's not quite as friendly or doesn't ever come out. 
you might want to have some springtails um, or some isopods that can go in and do that cleaning job for you to prevent mold. So it's pretty fascinating um, doing this. I haven't really spent a lot of time, you know, working on something with this much detail. I hope you're you're enjoying taking a look here. So we got some hair, hairy legs here. You can see where the eyes of the tarantula were on top of her her head. All of this part, for those who don't know, it's uh, the body. Looks like we've got a couple spinnerets here. There they are. Tarantulas use these to guide their web where they want to put it when it comes out of their, their abdomen. I read that, that uh, it's liquid silk until it comes out, so that's interesting. I think it's an unending supply. There's a little foot right there. Check that out. Now there are claws on the end of the foot. These claws are retractable like a cat. They can even kind of hold on to your skin with these claws. Um, And it's pretty cool to see the claws uh, come out and go back in. And it looks like on this molt there are claws too on the very end. So they molt out with their exoskeleton, the ends of their claws. There you can kind of see. Try to get that in. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope that... Um, You've learned something or just, you know, had a good time taking a look at uh, peekaboo's, peekaboo's fangs. I'm going to um, change lenses on my camera and I will go ahead and give you a, a look at peekaboo who just molted um, this morning. Here is Peekaboo herself. She's inside of her burrow and she's recuperating. I didn't want to get all the big lights out and shine them on her. Just a brief uh, peek at her. See how she's doing. Her fangs are still uh, white, of course, because that was molt just happened this morning. And I, I cannot say how big she is, you know, what her... Uh, she was five inches. I mean, she just came out of that molt, so she's probably even bigger. I would say she's probably gained a lot of size because her last molt was 3.5 inches. And this molt, I measured it, it was five inches. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she's probably bigger than this last molt. So that's pretty amazing. Here's the light box I was using. Um to look at Peekaboo's molt and I was also using this um, Raynox and you can see it's a DCR 250 it's a super macro conversion lens so what I do is I take this uh, cheap Nikon um, this is a Nikkor it's actually uh, refurbished and I use it sometimes for taking pictures of birds and wildlife um, and this has an adapter on it and you can see on the box, it has these two little tabs on the side and you squeeze those in. You put, you put it flush with the lens, you squeeze those two tabs and it opens up in, and it clings inside of the, the lens. And then 
that's the adapter and then this is the actual um, microscope a macroscopic lens that you just screw into the d the adapter you have to do that before you put it on so yeah and that's how that works um i so far only use it on manual i think that might be the only way i'm not sure but it works for me and uh, i also wanted to show you my my tray of molds <laughs> I have this tray of molds and I would say out of all of these molds, which these are all of the molds that I have uh, since I started with my tarantulas, which was in December of 2017. Wow, where's the time going? Um, you can see here is part of the latest um, G. pulchra. It's kind of... Uh, little bit uh, damaged um, then I have a little container of tiny molds here these are from some of my very smallest slings you know there's not much I can do with these just keeping them maybe someday I'll have a microscope I can practice with them or who knows what I don't know Anyway, I thought I would share with you all these molts and just let you know that if you're frustrated and you've been trying to sex your tarantulas, it might take some time. I mean, maybe you'll catch on a lot quicker than I did. I think part of my problem is that uh, I did try to use my Raynox and my lens and I didn't, I couldn't, couldn't get it to work at one point. Uh, I tried to use it with a video and I couldn't get it to work and I just thought oh this is not going to work and so you know another late night where I have the energy to try again and it worked out and so that was pretty good uh, being able to see uh, everything that peekaboo had to show us I want to share with you some uh, resource that I found for sexing tarantulas. And this is from Arachno Hobby Brazil, um, and it's called Espermateca. And the address for this on the internet is http um, colon backslash backslash arachno hobby brazil and brazil is spelled b-r-a-s-i-l instead of z-i-l and then it's dot blogspot dot com and then backslash 2009 backslash 09 dash espermatica dot html and i'm also going to put that in writing at the, on the screen so that you can see it. Now what this is, is a just beautiful diagrams of the um, female organs, the sper spermatica, spermatica of many species of tarantula. And there are about eight pages of these. I printed them out. This is a wonderful resource. Someone has gone to the trouble of drawing each of these by hand. So if you don't know about this resource, check them out. Um, and again, uh, that's Arachno Hobby Brazil. And Arachno is A-R-A-C-N-O. There's no... Um, H in it. 